Hey everyone! Ever wondered how machines can learn to compress images and them back to life? In this video, we'll build a simple but powerful deep autoencoder using PyTorch, step by step, inside Google Collab. We'll use the Fashionist dataset, compress its images using an autoencoder, and then try to reconstruct them as closely as possible to the originals. Let's begin. Open a new notebook in Google Collab and connect your Google Drive. Create a new folder called Autoencoder and navigate to it. To get started, we import some essential libraries. PyTorch, our main deep learning framework for building and training the autoencoder. Torch Vision, it gives us access to datasets like Fashionist and helpful image transforms. Matplotlib, so we can see how well our model reconstructs images. And TQDM, for those satisfying progress bars while training. Next, we define a few important settings. We'll train the model for 10 epochs, that's how many times the model sees the whole dataset. A batch size of 64 keeps training efficient and memory friendly. We're using a small learning rate of 0.0001 to help the model learn gradually. And we'll run it on GPU if available because who doesn't like faster training? These parameters define how fast and how long our autoencoder will learn. Before we feed images into the autoencoder, we convert them into tensors. PyTorch models work with tensor inputs, so this step is crucial to prepare the data in the right format. We then load the Fashionist dataset. It contains grayscale images of clothing items like shirts, shoes, and bags, all in 28 by 28 pixel size. We download both the training and validation datasets and organize them into batches using data loaders. This makes it easier for the autoencoder to process the data during training and evaluation. Let's take a closer look at how an autoencoder works, step by step. Here's a visual of a deep autoencoder that compresses and reconstructs grayscale fashion images. We start with an input image, a 28 by 28 grayscale picture of a NIST fashion image. Flattening this image gives us a vector of 784 pixel values. This is what we feed into our autoencoder. The encoder is the first half of our model. Its job is to compress the input image into a smaller, meaningful representation. The first layer reduces the 784 input features down to 512. The next layer compresses it even further into just 32 features. This 32-dimensional vector is the compressed representation, a compact summary of the original image. It holds only the most essential information, dropping all the unnecessary details. This is the bottleneck, the heart of the autoencoder. From here, the model will try to rebuild the image using just these 32 values. Now comes the decoder, the second half of our model. Its goal is to reverse the compression process. First, it expands the 32 compressed features back to 512. Then, it reconstructs the original 784-dimensional format, aiming to recreate the input image. On the right, we get the reconstructed image. It might not be identical to the original, but it's very close, and that's the power of an autoencoder. Inside the layers, we use ReLU activations in the hidden parts to introduce nonlinearity and a sigmoid function at the output to ensure pixel values stay between 0 and 1. In summary, this autoencoder learns to take an image, compress it into a smaller representation, and then rebuild it with surprising accuracy, all without any labels. It's a powerful example of unsupervised learning and a great foundation for deep learning tasks like image denoising, feature extraction, and dimensionality reduction. Now let's build our autoencoder model. We also define MSE loss means squared error, which helps us measure how close the reconstructed image is to the original. The Atom optimizer, which updates the model's weights to improve its performance over time. Next, we define the training function. For each batch, we flatten the images, feed them to the autoencoder, compare the outputs to the originals using MSE loss, backpropagate the error, and fine-tune the model's weights. 
This is how the autoencoder gradually learns to recreate the input images more accurately. Alongside training, we also define a validation function to check how well the autoencoder is performing. During validation, we hit pause on learning, no wait updates, just performance checks. And at the end of each epoch, we show side-by-side -side images, so we can see how well our autoencoder is learning. Now we loop through 10 epochs of training and validation. After each epoch, we print the training and validation loss. We also save the side-by-side -side original and reconstructed images to see the progress visually. By the end of the training, we'll have a deep autoencoder that takes a grayscale image of clothing, compresses it to a low-dimensional vector, and reconstructs it back with results that get better and better over time. And just like that, we've built a deep autoencoder that can compress and reconstruct fashionist images with surprising accuracy. It's a powerful stepping stone toward advanced tasks like denoising, anomaly detection, and more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, where we'll dive even deeper into deep learning.